Good evening and welcome to Across the Pitch. We're the soccer show for people who think Forrest Green was a guy who said that life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Forrest Green. <laughs> now, of course, it was Forrest Gump who said life is like a box of chocolates. Was it? But Forrest Green, the Forrest Green Rovers FC specifically, is one of the teams who we're going to be talking about tonight. And, and Aaron, I believe that you wrote a bit of a preview about them. Yes. I did. <laughs> but we're also the, the soccer show for people who think that the San Francisco Giants are the unknown team from Oakland. Oh, dude. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do I need to do my apology now or should I, <laughs> should I do it later? <laughs> I think it's, it's front and center right now. So Okay. Let's... Okay. <laughs> On tonight's show, an apology. I made a faux pas in my article this week. It was a playoff uh, prediction uh, between Tranmere Rovers, the League Two playoff, against uh, the Forest Green Rovers. It was a wonderfully written piece, I must say. It had uh, great alarm, a bit of dash in there, and some rhyme if you go and have a look at it. But I may have gone and got my geography a little bit wrong. And by wrong, I mean by one word. One word wrong. It's all right. You know, I've, I've actually been to Liverpool. I've crossed the Mersey, crossed the Birkenhead, and I know that the Tranmere Rovers play in Wirral. I made an error. I apologise. I was duly put in my place by some uh, v vociferous fans of our team of the month. Those guys <laughs> on the left bank of the Mersey, on the peninsula known as Wirral. I suspect their acrimony stems from being in the shadow of the two other teams, you know, on the, the other side in, in Liverpool City proper and the associated inferiority complex comes along with it. I apologise, all right, guys? You're Wirral. You're part of you know, the, the greater Liverpool area. Um, you know, we're a show for Americans uh, who want to know more about the game. And look, listen, honestly, guys, if you're from Birkenhead and you're visiting over here and they ask you, where are you from? You're going to say Liverpool, aren't you? You are. Now, just another thing about this. I just wonder why they didn't get more upset about my prediction, which I'll be talking more about later, because it wasn't good for them, but they weren't happy. They weren't upset about that. They were just upset about the fact that I just <laughs> misplaced a word or two, all right? Listen, I've got something for you guys, okay? You don't actually play in Tranmere. You play in Prenton Park, which is in Prenton. So you should be called the Prenton Rovers. Have a go at me. Go on, bring it back. What do you got for me? Anyway, uh, apart from that, I uh, apologize unreservedly. <laughs> <laughs> On tonight's show, we investigate the theory that we are living in a computer simulation of FIFA Manager. We do geography lessons and the Across the Pitch team chomp on some red or blue pills. I forget which one I took. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you remember. We hope to defy our game-controlling overlords by predicting the future of the playoffs. That and more tonight on tonight's show, but first... Make sure you head on over to Twitter and follow us at Across Pitch. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Across the Pitch. And don't forget to visit acrossthepitch.com. Click on that blog button and check out all our previews that we're going to be talking about tonight. Not only that, but we've also got bios up there now, Matt, haven't we? Yeah, some of us do. I'm still working on mine. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. So they, they at least know who they're shouting at. <laughs> at least the Twitter guys know who they're shouting at. That's cool. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 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 yeah we do have a lot of new stuff up on the website we also have some articles up from our new writer darren woodhead who of course you've heard on the and show he just, before hey, he's, he's these articles are amazing hey yeah he really brings the in-depth perspective of somebody who's attended games out these stadiums on a regular basis and he's kind of become our uh, our feet on the ground over in the uk and uh, once he does finish up his book here in July, we're going to be hearing a lot more from Darren and are, are really looking forward to that. Uh, He's we, also uh, in charge of our fan zone section on acrossthepitch.com, isn't he? 
Yeah, tell us about that a bit, Aaron. Oh, yeah. You're uh, you're working uh, you're working with uh, Darren on the fan zone. Right? I, I am, I am, and and the idea about this is that we want to hear your stories, okay, about your favorite football team, your club. So uh, the idea is that you know we want to uh, expose uh, people across the world to this game of football and and give them a bit of an understanding about what it's like to be a lifelong football fan for a club. So basically what we're saying is, um, you know, there's a couple of questions you need to answer. If you're interested, you can go to acrossthepitch.com, click on the fan zone button up the top, and you'll be taken to our page there where you'll see our host, Phil Kennedy, front and centre in the Phoenix Rising there. (laughs) But basically what we want to know is why you follow a particular club, wherever you might be in the world. Um, In North America, you're not excluded from this. We want to know why you're following a particular club, either here or in the UK. Um, And we want to know things like, you know, what's your earliest memory? is, uh, what your best and worst memory is, and what your club means to you. And we're going to feature one each week on our blog. And we do also have one special thing coming up at the end of the show. Of course, at the beginning and the end of every show, you hear some music from the Glides. Of course, we've had Travis Kitty, the lead singer for the Glides, on the show before. The Glides are actually releasing a brand new single uh, this Friday. They're having their, uh, their local release party. The song won't be available on Spotify and streaming services Mm -hmm. until the first day of summer. That's going to be the international and electronic release date. However, you will get to hear it here first. If you stick around to the end of the show, we're going to be playing the Glide's brand new song, Get Some, Mm -hmm. at the end of the show tonight. Yeah, There you go, special treat. Yes, wow, aren't we lucky? Always exciting to be able to debut some new music. Excellent. I can't wait for this. I love that we're uh, not only debuting new music, but we're also cutting edge when it comes to playoff previews. And that's what we're going to have a bit of a chat about now, lads, isn't it? Because a couple of these teams are about to speak of. I couldn't find any information. I had to go and and delve deep to look into this. Um, Guys, did you find it difficult? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's just not uh, a lot out there on some of these lower division teams. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. I, I did both previews for the championship games, um, and so there was kind of a lot I could find there. Uh, I especially like a an app called FootMob that yes. uh, gives you some some breakdowns. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, looking into the lower leagues, it's just tough. Not a lot of people are covering these leagues because that's not where the money is at. Ideally, yep. right? All the money's in the yep. Premier League or Serie A, Bundesliga. Um, so it's good, man. I'm, I'm excited for what we're doing. Called the Champions League. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> so I'm excited for what we're doing. So what about yes, you, Phil? Did you find it hard doing some research? No, I've been doing some of the uh, the previews here for a couple weeks on the the lower leagues with the Accrington Stanley, for instance, and uh, you know, obviously I watch all of the Accrington games, so those were a little bit easier for me. But on the the lower league teams, it, it has taken me some time, but I I have found a couple of really good sites uh, that are great for finding information. There's a site called 11v11.com that, that's really great for historical matchup data that will tell you things like uh, Team Y has played Team X 50 times and throughout their history and list all the matchups and give all the scores so you can kind of get an idea of uh, you know what teams' history are against each other on that site. Soccerbase.com is a site that I found that that's real nice for looking at players because it will actually show you game by game uh, the schedule, what player, what games a player has appeared in, whether or not he scored a goal. So it's good if you're looking at things like team form and trying to see, you know, uh, who scored the most goals over the last 10 games for a team. Uh, soccerbase.com is a website that I've found that's real good for that. Right on. Yeah. I've also, uh, I've also found transfer markets a good website just to get yes. some individual statistics as well as who scored.com. That's right. So that's really, really good information for you supporters of lower league teams, especially over here in the States. I'm, I'm pretty sure those guys in the UK are well aware of these because they're right. scrapping for information. But if you want to know more about these lower league teams that we're talking about, go and have a look at those websites that we've just mentioned. So I, I, we should probably start uh, at the bottom. Uh, and when I say the bottom, I, I don't mean the bottom. I mean the very bottom. Uh, let's have a look at the Vanarama National League. I'm 
quite excited by this because there's going to be some fresh blood in the leagues next year, regardless of how these playoff games go. Leighton Orient has already advanced. Leighton Orient won that league. They got the automatic promotion. There's only one automatic promotion, so they'll be the, the one of the two teams that are coming up from the National League to League Two. One interesting thing that I noticed uh, is I was looking on some gambling sites at the odds for League Two championship next year, and I believe that I want to say that, that Leighton Orient is actually listed as fourth or fifth favorite. I want to yeah. say they were around 10 or 12 to 1 to actually win League 2 next year. So that tells you how strong they are coming up out of the National League is that they're actually favored to finish in top end of the table in League 2 next year. Wow, so they're making a push. That's good. Good for them. Nigel Travis. Right, yeah, Duncan. that Dunkin' Donuts money. Ah, there you go. I just like saying Nigel Travis because he sounds like a British country singer. Yeah, so we got the final (laughs) coming up uh, Saturday, May 11th, for the National League, right? For that last playoff spot. That's right. So Two teams that have never, never appeared in the leagues before. Right, so we got, uh, I'm I'm just going to butcher this name, and and so just, I'm sorry, but it's filed. Yeah, I reckon that's it. Filed. I reckon you're right. Filed. And then uh, yeah. they're they're playing Salford City, which of course is the team backed by a lot of ex Manchester United players. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it should be interesting. What what do you guys think? Do you have any kind of inclinations as to who's going to win this and, and gain that promotion into uh, the football league? Yes, I do. I, I believe AFC filed will be filed in that filing <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> it had to be done. I'm sorry. I do apologize to fans, I guess, of AFC filed. Honestly, I think they were outsiders to get into the playoffs, if my memory serves me correctly. Yeah, the, and Salford's always been in the Yeah, next. they ended fifth. So yeah. Salford City, you know, obviously finished third. Right. So, so you're thinking maybe a little underdog scenario, something similar to what we saw in this week's Champions League matchups? No, I see Salford winning. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I made that very clear. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, because I know Salford has beat them, uh, beat them this year. So I, I'm probably going to go yeah. Salford as well. I think uh, yeah. when you got the backing and kind of the leadership – their last matchup on April 22nd, filed beat Selford 1-0. Oh, okay. So uh, Selford was filed at the circular file and on that. <laughs> the and if it's not pronounced filed, we're going to sound really <laughs> well, well, get in contact with us on acrossthepitch.com or <laughs> facebook.com slash acrossthepitch. Let us know we've, sell, we've said it wrong. That So, yes, uh, Salford versus AFC Filed, we'll just go with, uh, kicks off at Wembley, Saturday 11th of May at 3 p.m. So that'll be interesting. While we're actually on non-league, before we move off non-league, I did want to make a quick mention that this isn't going to be coming up until uh, uh, late summer towards the beginning of next season. However, we do have another non-league feature coming up. It's going to be Caversham United FC. They were uh, champions of their league this year and are looking at a promotion. So we're going to be doing a little bit of feature on Caversham United FC. We're going to talk to their manager, find a little bit about their team and uh, how things are going for them moving up a league. While we're on interesting team names, one of the most interesting things about Caversham United that I found out last night is that their arch rival, who they're they're actually oh, leaving behind? This is great. Their arch rival. <laughs> this is an actual team name. Oh, don't chew on it, mate. Come on, Borussia T. <laughs> <laughs> So look them up. There's a real oh. team called Borussia Teeth. And it's like the Dortmund logo, but then it's got like Bogles a molar me. in it. it. It's good stuff. So, uh, you know, it, it, these are things that you will only hear on across the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> were they a bunch of dentists, maybe? Were they like Sheffield, uh, Sheffield Wednesday back in the day? They were butchers. These are a bunch of dentists. 
I have looked, and do you know that there's actually, yeah, uh, there's non-league teams out there that are called, like, Sheffield Tuesday and nah, Sheffield yeah. Thursday. Yeah, I believe it, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> so, uh, what have we got in Sheffield? <laughs> Bor- Borussia Mola. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Those non- non-league teams getting creative with their team names, man. Can't blame them. I like it. I like it. Um, all right, so we digress there. <laughs> Let's move on to League Two, and, and let's start off. We we talked a little bit about uh, your your famous mm. article yes. earlier, Aaron, but but we didn't really get into the uh, the right. meat of the preview. So you want to jump in and tell us a little bit about our team yes. of the month, the Tranmere Rovers, who are not nope. from Liverpool, all from Tranmere, against the. Forest Green Rovers, who are from what was it? Nailshead. I think I've got that Nailsworth. right. It, it better not be Fairy Green, which I think is next door to it, because God, I'm going to cop it if that's the case. <laughs> so yes, uh, it's a League Two playoff. It's a semi-final. So yes, the the winner of this playoff semi-final uh, between the Prenton Rovers and the Forest Green Rovers will go ahead and play in Wembley against Mansfield or. Newport County. Newport County, you may remember on a show, were featured quite heavily with their FA Cup uh, quarterfinal match against Manchester City. For one of these Rovers, the season will be over. That's my rhyming for tonight. That's all I'm doing. Um, Tranmere or Prenton go into this playoff match with a dreadful run of form. They've only won one in the last seven matches, uh, the Prenton Park Rovers, as opposed to Forest Green, who are doing really well. They've, they're unbeaten in five of the past six. Um, and one of those is a victory against uh, the White Rovers, the Prenton Park Rovers. Forest Green look like they're on form. Uh, they're a team that are a little bit divisive. We've spoken about them before. They're, they're unpopular because basically they, they do things differently. Um, and also the winning on the pitch. So, you know, that's a good reason to hate someone. Uh, my <laughs> prediction for this one here was the Tranmere will actually win at Prenton Park over there in Wirral, the other side of the Mersey on the left bank, if you will. They will win first leg 1-0, and I believe the Forest Green Rovers at home on the new lawn will beat Tranmere Rovers 2-0 in the second leg. So the aggregate will end up 2-1 Forest Green Rovers versus 1 for Tranmere Rovers. That was the point that I was going to make that, I don't know, if I was a Tranmere Rovers fan, I'd be really upset about it. It's like, no, we're going to dust them. But no, it's all right. You you worry about your geography, lads. That's fine. (laughs) Some things are more important, man. What's going to happen is one of the Forest Green players is going to step in some organic horse shit and twist their knee and then Tranmere's going to... All right, all right. Uh, A fun (laughs) little fact about this is that the the Tranmere striker, James Norwood, he's having this amazing, mind-blowing freaking year, this kid, right? He's 28 years of age, so he's not really a kid anymore, but he scored uh, 31 goals and 50 appearances. That makes... More than 40% of Tranmere's goals this season. More than 40%. Right, this kid is just blowing everything out of the water. Unfortunately, there's no one else around him to, to pull a supporting act, you know. <laughs> but the fun part about this is that he will be facing his former team in this playoff match. So, yes, Forrest Green, let him go. Like a, a Jamie Vardy might be a, a good comparison. He doesn't really right. have a lot of help. There you, go. There you go. James Norwood was a former Forrest Green striker and they let him go a couple of years back i reckon he'd be pride probably trying to prove a point or two out there during this week but um i, I don't see him actually him beating forest green rovers sorry so aaron you think forest green since they have that familiarity with with james norwood are gonna know how to shut uh, him quite down? possibly yeah yeah um and yeah. i believe the the manager has was in charge when uh, james norwood was there as well so um yeah i believe they probably have an idea or two yeah, yeah. do you happen to know how he did in the games against uh tranmere this no. season <laughs> <laughs> let me check soccer base real quick so and i and i see you know again if you guys haven't read this article head on over to acrosspitch.com Click on that blog button. But, you know, in the article, you've listed that Tranmere are dealing yes, with a are. lot of injuries that's, that's right, right now. That's right. So uh, defenders Mark Ellis and Liam uh, Rid, sorry, Rid, ha- Rid La- I don't know, just go with Liam, are out. So that's a big hole in their defense. And it shows as well, like they are leaking goals 
of late Tranmere. They're also missing uh, an academy, uh, Manchester United Youth Academy player, Luke McCulloch. He was really providing a lot of impetus uh, forward up into James Norwood. And without those key players, they're really on bare bones. It's going to be very difficult for Tranmere yeah. Rovers to progress, I see. Yeah, which obviously is is a representative of Absolutely. their form, right? You said one win That's in their correct. last yeah. seven. Which is not a good is not the run you want to be off going no. into some playoffs. No, not at all. Yeah. Miserable run in. Yeah, interesting. That'll, that'll mm. be a good one. I looked up James Norwood here, and he did not score in either game against Tranmere this year. And actually, Forest Green did win both matches against Tranmere this year. One was three to one. One was right. one zero. So, so Tranmere has only scored one goal in two games against mm. Forest yep. Green this year. Yep, unfortunately for our team of the month, uh, you know what? The across the pitch curse has been lifted. I think it's actually gone the other way. So we could be wrong with this, but um, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to put my money on on Trantmere. And going back to what I said earlier, uh, is that I think that their experience from the EFL Cup is going to help them in the knockout tournament, much like the mm. other team that I wrote about, which is Newport County. Newport County did squeak into the seventh seed with a draw on the final oh, no. The final day of the season, they managed a 1-1 draw with an 86th minute goal. So literally with four minutes left in the season, <laughs> Newport County managed to claim the final seventh playoff spot with one point more than two other teams that they were battling with. And then what that has done is that set up a matchup for them where the, uh, the seventh place Newport County Exiles are going to be taking on the fourth place Mansfield Town Stags in their matchup that I wrote about. And I'm going to pick the Exiles because if you look at it, as I put it in my article, it's been a tale of two seasons for Mansfield and a tale of three seasons (laughs) for Newport. I see what you did there, Phil. That's good. With Mansfield, they started out absolutely on fire in fact they only lost once in their first 24 matches of the season so they went all the way in from august 4th of 2018 when the season started 24 matches until january 5th 2019 before they got their second loss however in the 22 games since they've lost nine of 22 They've also lost five of their last 10, whereas Newport actually has not lost in their last 10. So so these are two teams on very different runs of form. And of course, Newport has their uh, their knockout tournament experience from the FA Cup. Jamil Matt uh, is a, a striker for them who has scored 14 goals. He was the one that scored that equalizer in the final game of the season, which was against Exeter. And then they, of course, have uh, Podge Almond, uh, Podge as he likes to go by, who also had 14 goals. And of course, they, that doesn't even include the right. big ones he had at the FA Cup. So, so Newport has a pair of strikers who are capable of uh, putting the onion in the bag. Uh, <laughs> and they're also opening that uh, playoff two-legged tie against Mansfield at home on the rugby pitch. Hopefully it's uh, a little bit more manicured than it was during that FA Cup run that they had. I'm picking Newport 4-3 on the the aggregate, and I I did actually get a a little bit creative with it just because of how Newport's season is gone. I said, look for Almond or Matt to grab the aggregate go-ahead winner somewhere around, say, the 88th minute on the Sunday second leg of the match, because with this Newport team, it wouldn't happen the other way. That seems to be the way they go about it, doesn't it? Do you guys think that maybe Newport, you know, because they had to squeak into that final playoff spot, so maybe they have a little more push drive to kind of, you know, move on to the final uh, to get this promotion spot, whereas Mansfield was kind of locked in it. They weren't really, yeah, you know, so they might have taken the week off. Or That last game was against MK Dons. They could have got an automatic promotion if they'd won that last game. So, I mean, they weren't playing for nothing. They 
they were in an automatic promotion spot all year and backed out of it over the last 10 yeah. weeks basically so they might be on on a you know on a low yeah. really yeah. coming off of a, yeah. a very demoralizing defeat to MK Dons that could have sealed them automatic promotion had they won and so maybe Newport you know is smelling smelling yeah. blood in the yeah. water I, Could be I right, um, so. but as we know, football is not just a funny old game; it's a ridiculous, bloody game at times, as we've seen. Uh, <laughs> that is, as we've seen lately, as the Champions League has um, proven, you, you can't <laughs> really call these games because the playoff games—they are a different animal. You know, you've got 180 minutes. You've got 180 minutes to do your bit, and that's it. Uh, it's not like you're going and playing this thing for like 46 games like they're doing. Yeah, and, and we see that all the time over here, you know, being in the U.S. With, with the MLS is oftentimes those teams that finish first seed, second seed, and, and they have a bye week that first round are, don't really right. go on and do yes. well in the playoffs because they kind of take a little dip in form. And playoffs are a whole different I think animal. that expectation um, you know? as well. And I think that's probably what you're alluding to there, Matt, with oh, – shit, I was about to say Macclesfield. Who are we looking at again? <laughs> Man's Man's I think that there are certain teams that, that are just better at the, the knockout yeah. tournament. That's kind of why I like Newport and Tranmere is because they, they've proven that they're, they're those teams. But the I mean, the, the thing about it is is out of these four teams, one of them is going to be headed up to League One. And in League One, there's a couple of interesting playoff matchups that, that we've written about also. Now, the first one of those was the, uh, the Doncaster versus Charlton matchup that that right. Darren had written. What do you guys think about this? This is a match between two fairly big clubs for yeah, League yeah. One. I mean, the, these are two teams that are probably championship sized clubs, at least in in terms of club well, size. Yeah, you, and, you you say championship. Uh, Doncaster sort of floated between the championship and uh, League One over the years. Charlton, don't forget. Are ex Premier League. They were in the Premier League for years. Um, the Attics, as, yep. as they call them down there in Southwest London, were a fixture. They, they were one of those London Derby games, and through poor management and poor decisions, they 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 have sunk this far. They're one of those teams. They seem to be on the up and up. I have to say that Charlton are the form team in League One. They actually jumped all the way up from fifth to third in the final week of the season. They needed to to have four goals to do it because so they, they started off the day where they had three fewer goals than, than Portsmouth, right. which meant that Charlton needed four goals to pass them on, on goal differential and to not concede. They managed to do that and grab the, the third seed away from Portsmouth on the, the last day of the season. This is a team that is definitely hungry for that promotion. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, kind of piggybacking on what Aaron said, Charlton's in form right now. Remarkably. In They're form. pushing. Yeah. And so, you know, Doncaster's got a a ways to go and it's not looking good. I agree with Darren. I think this is Charlton's tie to lose uh, and should set up a nice final. I think this is probably Charlton's championship to lose. Right. Um, honestly, yeah. uh, Portsmouth and uh, Sunderland, who are on the other side of that tie, again, that weight of expectation, I think, is figuring upon those teams. And Charlton's like knocking on the door going, hey guys, we've been here before. We've done this. Off we go. See you later. We've got nothing to lose here. I I honestly think Charlton's going to win this thing. I would have to agree because as I wrote in my preview that I did on the Sunderland and Portsmouth matchup, both teams backed into the uh, backed into the playoffs. Sunderland had their last four games; they didn't win. They had two draws, two losses over their last four. And Portsmouth had a draw. Excuse me, Portsmouth had a loss and two draws over their last mm. three. So neither one of these teams came into the the end of the season on good form. Portsmouth ended up with a draw on the last game of the season against Accrington, who had nothing to play for, and that was at home. Uh, they, They only managed one goal in that game. 
Sunderland, they lost on a, a last minute goal to South End United, who actually ended up avoiding relegation <laughs> uh, by, by beating Sunderland yeah. there in, in that last one. So neither one of these teams is playing well at all. And I'm going to go with Portsmouth, uh, as I said in my article, because here, here's what I feel like is I feel like Sunderland is a team that that they were on their way down, on their way down, relegated twice in a row, finally got in some new ownership, but they're still in that first year. This is a team on their first year back up. They traded their leading score to France midway through the season. So, I mean, this is a team that's still in transition, and and I just, I think next year they'll get promoted. I don't think that this is their year yet, and I think we'll see Portsmouth and Charlton in the the final. Well, I think the big question is, is did Portsmouth and Sunderland peak at the wrong time? In other words, did they peak with the the EFL Trophy final? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. It seems like since that final, that was what, March 31st? You know, Portsmouth yep. won that on penalties 5-4. But it seems like there there was a downturn in form for both of those clubs after the final. And so did they just peak too early? And Charlton was that team almost kind of lying in yeah. wait, just just kind of saying, hey, you know, we're, we're here. All we need to do is qualify for those playoff spots, and we know that we can make waves there. Yeah. Um, well, with Sunderland, one thing that I think, and this is something I mentioned in their article, they just couldn't seem to put away games. This is a team that actually, Sunderland only lost five games all season, which was the fewest in the league, but they had 19 draws, yeah. which was the most in the league. So so if you, you, you figure 19 times, they had a chance chance at two more points and gave them away that's so 38 points, points that, that they gave away there in draws here's an interesting thing they only had five losses how many losses came after that march 31st oh. uh, defeat well two in the last four oh, weeks interesting. alone Very interesting so three total you're into something Matt. you know they lost to coventry uh and then they went on to lose to fleetwood and South End United. So, I mean, it just seems to me that both those clubs just peaked at the wrong time, really. Do you think that these two teams, Charlton's been there for a little while, these two teams have have popped down in recent years. Do you think that they might have the same sort of arrogance, I'm going to say arrogance, as you will see in the, the League One fan groups on Facebook and thereabouts, that they're going to walk the league? that they're entitled to do it, but yet they don't actually quite understand the competition that's happening down there because they are against the likes of these grizzled teams like Doncaster who are bouncing between leagues. They know what they're right. doing, but they seem to sort of have this swagger about them that's undeserved because, you know, you've fallen two leagues in two years, guys. Come on. Maybe, right. you know, nose to the grindstone. Let's, let's start again. What? That's a great point, man. I mean, we see it in the FA Cup and the, the League Cup all the time where – you know, you'll have Premier League teams drawn against League One Championship, even League Two teams, and they just don't take them seriously, right. and they get beat. Yep. And so it makes sense that a team like Sunderland, who three years ago was in the Premier yep. League, you know, and, and they're thinking we don't, we don't, we're better than League right. One. We're gonna walk through this, mm-hmm. and now they're kind of at that point where it's like, okay, maybe this was a little harder than we expected. Yeah. Not surprised. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, if you watch the documentary last year, their their fans were thinking they were going to walk the championship. Right, right. And they yeah. Got <laughs> right. yeah. Uh, I, I, That's a good shout. I do think that Sunderland has has hit rock bottom, as has Portsmouth. This is their nadir. They will go up from here, but not this. Now, speaking of going yes. up, so we're I think we're all on the the page of Charles going up in the championship. There's a couple of matchups happening in the championship. This is and, delicious. And Matt, this is going to be your part of the show because you did these Darby County. <laughs> I love the way you said uh, it. Uh, the doing the leads United. Tell us about those because you, you can, wrote those, Matt. Can so I, uh, what, what's going on with I'm those? just going to jump in here and just say that these two matchups, um, for, for those interested in the historical part of these two matchups, these are two very, very antagonistic 
uh, playoff matches here. So West Brom and Aston Villa are from what's termed the Midlands uh, in England. Uh, they both play around that sort of Birmingham area there. Um, they're local derbies, basically, these these two. That's going to be great fun. They're both ex-Premier League teams as well. The other one, and uh, we've spoken about this at length, is Derby versus Leeds, and that has to be for non-Premier League sides. These two teams probably have the biggest rivalry, not only across history, but certainly just within the microcosm of this season. Now, the narrative of these two teams is something that you've never come across before. You may never have heard of them. Go and have a look at things like the Damned United, for example, and Brian Clough, and have a look at how much history is behind the rivalry between this particular playoff. I'm done with my little history lesson and my geography lesson. Matt. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you couldn't have said it any better, man. I mean, these are like, if you were at the beginning of the season, if you had sat down and said, what matchups would you like to see? I'm sure there were a lot of people that would have picked these. So let's start out with West Brom uh, versus Villa. You know, like we said, this is the West Midlands Derby. These two teams have a storied history, both founded in the 1870s didn't meet for the first time until 1882. And since then, they played 145 times. Unbelievable. Villa taking 68 victories from that. West Brom taking 47. You guys can do the math and figure out the draws. I'm not, I don't want to no. do that at all. We're, uh, but we're, I mean, we're this done is with it. this, mate. We're not doing maths tonight, all right? <laughs> right. This is great, man. Both these games are on ESPN+. Plus, so if you're in the States, it's worth the $5 a month um, yeah. to, to watch this stuff. And this is going to be good. And I think there's a lot of interesting points to this, this particular Derby matchup. Um, first is the injuries. You're right, right. So Aston Villa's leading goal scorer, Tammy Abraham, has missed the last couple of matches with a shoulder injury, but he has returned to training. It's likely he's going to play, maybe not start, but definitely off the bench. Mm. And here's how on fire he's been. 37 appearances, 25 goals wow. for the wow. Villains. First player to score 25 goals in a season since Andy Gray in 1977. Wow, really? Yeah. Villa are going to need him healthy if they're going to get promotion. And then on the other side, West Brom, the big name on that injury sheet is Jake Livermore, the 29-year-old defensive midfielder. Um, He provides a lot of cover for West Brom's back line. And when you're going up against a guy like Tammy Abraham, you're, you want that cover there. You want that fifth guy that can drop in and provide that extra man to mark uh, Tammy Abraham's movement, as well as guys like Jack Grealish coming right. in from midfield. Right, who is um, having so a this hell is, of a season as well, isn't he, Jack? Right, yes. I, I would be <laughs> shocked if, if he actually stays with Villa no. after this year. Yeah, well, it'll depend on whether they go up or not, I guess. But Right, I mean, yeah, for sure. By uh, Crystal Palace as well as Tottenham as well. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's kind of two big names there. Great. And then just one last point. Again, if you haven't read the article, go check it out. I, I kind of go into more detail. But in the last five meetings, West Brom has not lost to Villa. Really? Yeah, wow. so that's huge. They've had two wins, three draws. You got to think. So if West Brom can just keep up that form of two wins, if winning and drawing against Villa, they go through, yeah, right? I that's mean, right. that's how that works. That's right. uh, but my prediction is, uh, you know, I think ultimately Villa are going to go on to Wembley 3-2 on the aggregate. Yep. Uh, I think just the return of Abraham, like you said, their form, that 10 match win streak that really propelled them into the playoffs is going to shine through and, and they're going to take this West Midlands Derby. I think you're I right. Agree. I think you're absolutely right. And as well, I've got nothing for the baggies. They're, uh, they're just like a, I don't know, they're like your dad's khakis, sort of, or sorry, khakis, as you guys would say over here. <laughs> <laughs> they're kind of like a bit unfashionable. They call them the baggies for a reason because they're like just, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, then, I mean, here's the thing, though, because then on the other side, mm. you, know, you, have, you have Leeds United, Derby County. Oh. We have some great history there with their rivalry. You know, you mentioned Brian Clough. But not only that, we have the whole Spygate incident from earlier this exactly. season. Exactly. Oh, yeah. God, I can't wait for this matchup. You know, you, you got a guy like Marcelo Bielsa leading up to that game. You know, he comes out and he talks about how he sent spies over – to to spy on on Darby as they they practiced and that led into 
a whole bunch of stuff. They were fined a bunch of money that Bielsa paid out of his pocket. So I'm sure as we get closer to Saturday and the kickoff of this two-legged affair, you're going to be hearing a lot about Spygate. Yeah. And they're going to be asked about it nonstop. And curiously, um, I think the thing about that is that Leeds have not been the same team since that surfaced either. Right. Yeah, that seemed to be when they, they kind of had this downturn in yeah, form. Yeah. Um, you know, and going back, if you go back to 2010 to now, Darby has gotten the better of Leeds in their head-to-head matchups. Right. During that time, they've played each other 18 times, and Darby has won 10 of those and drawn three. Wow. So it's going to be interesting. But this year, Leeds uh, went to Pride Park on the second match day, Bielsa's second day in charge, second match in charge, and they came out 4-1 winners. Okay. And then they won 2-0 at home. So they did get the better of, of Darby this season. But I think this is just going to be great, a uh, great matchup. My, my person to watch is going to be uh, Fico Tamore from Darby County. Center back won, won the player of the season award. If he has a great game, I think uh, he'll be the key to the Rams' success. Right. And so I'm, I'm kind of leaning. You guys know my <laughs> love for Chelsea and, and just that <laughs> connection between the two. I think it's going to be 1-0 one, one at home for the Rams at Pride Park. Mm-hmm. And I think they'll go to, to Ellen Road and, and come away with a 1-1 one, one draw mm-hmm. and ultimately – We'll meet Aston Villa at Wembley for the, the final promotion spot. I tend to agree with you. And if you want to watch a match that counts, I mean, we spoke about this two weeks ago, that, that Aston Villa versus Derby match. That's going to be a great match. But I'm talking about the, the Derby Leeds match. Now, that is going to trump that Aston Villa Leeds match, I think. I think that it's, it's Ellen- going to be good. Oh. I think you have two teams that go forward, they push, they want to play. Mm. And it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a slugfest. And again, like I, I, th- I think it's going to come down to the play of Fico Tamore for the Rams. He's just been solid back there in their defense. And so I think he'll be the key to their success. I agree with you that I think Darby County, <laughs> I think that, that Darby's going to win more than anything else. I, I think that, that Leeds is doing the old old leads and they're one of those teams right now that it doesn't matter who they play they're gonna lose i mean they lost to ipswich with 10 men I mean, yeah if, that was miserable that was yeah. miserable so if we're if we're all saying darby and villa going to wembley who goes up villa going villa i i am i think on recent form and uh, with Jack Grealish and I think Dean Smith's side, Aston Villa, they're going to go up. I think I think they're actually looking very, very good. They've got the formula right. They're going to go up. They were there last year, you know, and they lost to, to Fulham. So they have been there before. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess maybe a bit of... Uh... I'm torn on this one, guys. I, I don't know. I, I My gut says Villa as well. I think Villa wins 1-0. At Wembley. I agree with you guys. It's such a close matchup that I think he could go either way. But if I, I got to make a pick, I'll, I'll take Villa just because their, their form has been so good. And yeah. it, Darby really did struggle a bit down the end of the season. It wasn't even certain that right. they were going to make the playoffs until the last day. So All right. I, you know what, seeing as you guys are going Villa, I'm going to turn my, my opinion around and go Darby just to be one of those little pricks. go Darby right on (laughs) I like it all right so lads um we did want to talk about what the hell is going on in in football of late I don't understand are we run by uh, some omnipotent being with his PlayStation controller right now what's going on here I don't you know what man I it's been this is why we love football and this is why we hate football mm-hmm. all at the same time yeah. in these last two days. For those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about, Champions League, second leg. Uh, the first game was Liverpool-Barcelona. Liverpool was down 3-0 <laughs> on aggregate, came back, scored four unanswered at home. What, what, what did Phil say? <laughs> can we just can we add that back in there? My exact quote was, "Well, it's not like Liverpool is going to come out and beat Barcelona four nil." And that's exactly what happened. Unbelievable. And uh, to be fair, Matt, you and I also agreed. <laughs> we also. I don't, I don't think there's. I don't think I listened to one pundit 
podcast, read an article where anyone thought Liverpool was going to, especially with no Mo Salah and no uh, Firmino. And so they just showed that the quality, the depth, and you got to give it to Jurgen Klopp. Strategy, yes, Jurgen Klopp. I've been thinking about this pretty much since the the Tottenham Ajax game ended. I think Tottenham won that game as opposed to I think Barcelona lost Lost the game. Because if you watch the Barcelona Liverpool match, Barca was playing very un Barca like. Um, there was a lot of giveaways. There was a lot of lazy passing. Even when they were um, tied 3 3, there was no urgency in the Barcelona side. And even at 3 3, they kind of, it, it was just this feeling of like, we're going to score. It doesn't matter. We're going to win this game. And I think uh, Liverpool picked up on all those mistakes and exploited what they were doing. Yeah. And that's how Liverpool pulled that out. Would you say that, that Barcelona was playing not to lose more than they were playing to win? I don't, no, I, I don't even think it's that. I think Barcelona was just – I think they came in cocky. Yes. And they thought, we're up 3-0. This is a Liverpool side. There's no Mo Salah. There's no Roberto Firmino. Oh, yeah. look, there's – there's this guy named Origi that's starting up front that doesn't right, even right. start for them. We have this in the bag, you know, because we got Messi. I don't understand that from the Barcelona team, though, because they're in the same position, almost exactly the same position last year in the quarterfinals against a Roma team. I feel like, okay, so last year in the, quarter, in the quarterfinal of the Champions League, Barcelona went 4-1 up against Roma at home, so they had a three-goal difference. Admittedly, Roma did have that one goal, that one away goal there. Roma, at home, shut them out, Mm 3 0. So Roma went through on away goals. Now, they said after that game, Lionel Messi said after that game, it was like, we're going to bring home the Champions League Cup next year. When they started having a couple of goals down against uh, Liverpool this year, I think it was a head game after that point. They saw it happening again. They were like, we haven't learned our lessons. We're going down again. And and they were shot from that point forward. Liverpool were on the ascendancy. Barcelona didn't know what to do. They, they were just shot. It was a head game. Well, and I think this speaks to just the leagues in general, the 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 strength of the EPL versus the versus La Liga. Ah. How long ago did Barcelona wrap up La Liga's title? Two, three weeks? And so yep. for for two or three weeks, Barcelona's just been cruising in league games. They haven't been important. They haven't had to fight. Whereas Liverpool went into a game this weekend needing to start all of their players against Newcastle because they had to win or they would lose the shot at the title. And they got out a victory 3-2 in Newcastle. Yep. Yep. Um, and and so I think... I lost. Salah too. They lost a lot. I think it just speaks to the fact that Liverpool was kind of in this mentality of we have to fight, we're going to have to fight, we have to fight. Right. And Barca and came into been. this going, we're Barcelona, we're up 3-0 on aggregate, we, we're just going to walk over this team because again, even at 3-3, tied on aggregate, Barcelona was playing with no urgency. No. No. They, were, they, were, they were playing that, you know, passing – Tiki Taka walking, and it just looked like they just were thinking, well, we don't need to move. We don't need to hustle. We don't need to run because we're going to score a goal. And, and it was, came back there, to bite them. And so, there was that entitlement again. We, we right. are already up. We should win this. But you forget that Liverpool has been scrapping all season. Pep Guardiola during the week, who is the manager for Man City, said that this is the toughest mm. title race he has ever encountered. Right. And it, it speaks to, uh, I mean, not even just, you know, against Liverpool, but even like the minnows of, I don't know, Leicester, for example, who if it wasn't for a, a company wonder goal, they would have been behind. Exactly. Somehow managed to pull up ahead. And I think this is where the English game or the, the, the English league strength is in the EPL is that there are no soft games. Yep. And, right, I, no soft games. and I go back to the fact that, Again, I think Barcelona lost this game more so than Liverpool won it. But in the reverse, you know, on the reverse side, I think Tottenham won that game more so than Ajax lost it. That game was crazy oh. as well, but <laughs> Tottenham just... came out to play. Oh, Ajax, man, I, uh, I, I, Ajax got unlucky on a couple chances, you yeah. know, hit it, hitting the post a couple times. 
there was a couple that didn't even hit the post, but still were were close Relaxed. and just rolled. That, that they each had it right or rolled off could, the goal. You know, it was remarkable that game. You could tell in like that final minute leading up to Tottenham's winning goal, Ajax just mentally shut off. I think because they thought the whistle's coming anytime. We're we're fine, and that's when Lucas Moore just popped free in the box and and you know slid cool. one past Onana. And that's what um, it was. It was it, it wasn't really a particularly spectacular strike. But it was almost inevitable. Like right. it just seemed to just creep past there in slow motion, and of course Tottenham were going to win that. I'm, yeah, I think much. I think Tottenham won that game, and I think Barcelona lost the game yesterday. Agreed. Well done, Tottenham, you knobheads. <laughs> so uh, predictions for the finals, guys. We have an all English. Champions League final for the first time since uh, Chelsea versus Manchester United. We won't talk about how that finished up. <laughs> hey, when was the last time Arsenal was in a Champions League final? 2006. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were cheated out of it. <laughs> oh, God, let me go back. I was in a pub in London at the time, and I think our goalkeeper got red carded. So, uh, <laughs> predictions... Yes. I think that uh, UEFA will ban both clubs from playing because of Brexit. And <laughs> Barcelona and Ajax will be named there. Barcelona wins. Two- no, I'm just joking. Uh, Liverpool is going to win this game 2-1. Yeah. Well, that's been the, the, the league scores, I believe, isn't it? The, the home right. away. Yeah. Yep. I find it hard to believe. Okay, so for our American listeners, this game is after the Premier League finishes. It's after right. the FA Cup final is done. I think it's like July 1st or something ridiculous. June like 1st. That. Saturday, June 1st at noon, Arizona time. So basically, it's who wants to go on holiday more? Now, nah, see, I think, uh, I think Liverpool is going to lose the league. I think City wins the league. Liverpool is going to go into this Champions League final with a chip on their shoulders and a, and a lot more fight than I think Tottenham is going to go into it. Right. And that's why I think they come out 2-1. So, yeah, I agree with you, Matt. Um, Liverpool victory. It's going to be tight. It's going to be end-to-end. It's going to be a spectacular game. Go the Reds. <laughs> <laughs> I took the red pill. <laughs> yeah, Liverpool win 2-1 up the Chelsea. Uh, do you guys have anything else for tonight? I, I, I'm done. That... I'm done. I am just boggled with football. I, I don't even know where to finish up because this season has been crazy from go to woe. We've seen ridiculous upsets. We've seen a title race that has gone right down to Championship Sunday. <laughs> I don't even know if I can comprehend any more football for this week. <laughs> I need time out, man. I need time out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that does it for uh, for us for tonight. And thank you, as always, for joining us here on Across the Pitch. And as always, for my brother from Down Under. My mate from State 48 and... Mr. Wizard. Mr. Wizard. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Have a good night. <laughs>